So let's take a look at derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions. Now for the next couple of videos, we'll basically be learning shortcuts to finding derivatives and this will allow us to find derivatives at a much faster pace than using just the limit definition. Now let's first talk about the notation of the derivative. So let's say we have y equals some function f in terms of x. Now all the derivative rules that I'll be giving in this video will be something in the form of this, where we have d over dx of what we're trying to take the derivative of, so in this case f of x. And so what this notation basically says is we're going to derive the function with respect to x. Now starting off with the very first derivative rule, whenever you're trying to take the derivative of just a constant value, that derivative is always going to be equal to zero. Now for the second rule, if you're going to take the derivative of a constant times the variable x, then the derivative will just be equal to the constant itself. So if we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of 2x, 2 is going to be the constant and x is going to be the variable in this case, so the derivative is just going to be 2. And let's say we're trying to take the derivative of just x. The constant in front of x is just 1 because it's 1 times x, so the derivative will just be equal to 1. Now the next derivative rule is known as the power rule. So whenever we're trying to take the derivative of x raised to some power n, and n can basically be any real number, then in order to evaluate this derivative, or in order to find the derivative, all we have to do is bring the power down and subtract the power by 1. Now the next rules are going to be the sum and difference rule. So let's say you have the derivative, where you're trying to take the derivative of one of the functions f of x plus another function g of x. Then in order to evaluate this, we can separate into two different derivatives and first take the derivative of f of x and then plus the derivative of g of x. And the same thing works with the difference rule. Let's say instead of adding f of x and g of x, we're trying to take the derivative of subtracting f of x by g of x. In this case, we can still split it up into two different derivatives and take the derivative of f of x first and then minus the derivative of g of x next. And then the final rule is going to be when we take the derivative of e to the x. And this one's pretty easy because the derivative of e to the x is the same thing. It's going to remain as e to the x. Now obviously this might seem like a lot at first, but the thing is we have to apply these rules or these basic and fundamental rules over and over again throughout calculus. And the thing is by the time you reach midway through calculus 1 or towards the end of calculus 1 and start calculus 2, you'll have these derivative rules memorized so much that it'll come at an instant. So for this next set of problems, let's go ahead and differentiate the function. So for number one, we have f of x equals 186.5. Now 186.5 is a constant. And remember, whenever we take the derivative of some constant, the answer is always going to be equal to zero. So now there are several different ways we can write this. You can write it as f prime of x. You can say y prime. You can say dy dx. And so the way I would write it, because it's in the form f, f of x, then I'll write it as f prime of x, or its derivative will be exactly equal to zero. So now for number two, we have f of x equals 5x minus one. So now there's a couple ways to go about this, but because we have that negative here, when we're trying to derive, we can also use the difference rule and split it into two different derivatives. So we can first take the derivative of 5x and then minus the derivative of just the constant one. Now the derivative of 5x, remember the derivative of a constant times the variable x, it just can be equal to the constant itself. So the derivative of 5x, 5 is a constant, x is the variable, the derivative will just be equal to 5. So we have 5 minus the derivative of 1, remember the derivative of a constant is always going to be 0, so we have 5 minus 0, which is equal to 5. So we can go ahead and say that f prime of x, or the derivative, is exactly equal to 5. Now keep in mind that you don't always need to separate it into two different derivatives, if you can just think about it without having to write it down as two different derivatives, that's completely fine as well. So now for number three, we have f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. So let's go ahead and first start off, because we have the plus and minus that separate those three terms, we can go ahead and use the sum and difference rule. So we first take the derivative of x squared. Now this is x raised to a certain power. So we have to use the power rule, where whenever we take the derivative of x raised to the n power, we have to bring the power down and subtract the power by 1. So we have to relabel it as n times x to the n minus 1. So the derivative in this case of x squared, we're going to bring the 2 down and subtract 2 by 1. So the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x to the 2 minus 1, which is to the first. 
2x to the first is the same thing as 2x. So the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. So if I go ahead and write f prime of x equals 2x, we have plus the derivative of 3x. Now remember the derivative of a constant times x raised to the first power is just going to be the constant, so that's going to be 3. And then we have minus the derivative of 4, since 4 is a constant, remember the derivative is going to be 0. So that leaves us with the final answer of 2x plus 3. So now for number 4, we have f of t equals 1 over 4 times t to the 4th plus 8. Notice instead of the x variable, we have the t variable, but that doesn't matter. We can treat it the exact same way as we did with x variables. So the very first step here, we have a 1 fourth on the outside. I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute that inside the parentheses. So then we get f of t equals 1 over 4 times t to the 4th plus 8 times 1 over 4, which is 2. So now we can go ahead and take the derivative. Because we have a plus here that separates the two terms, we can use the sum rule. So we're going to first take the derivative of 1 over 4 times t to the 4th. Now, whenever we're trying to take the derivative of a constant times a function, f of x, let's go ahead and call that, we can actually take that constant outside of the derivative and say and rewrite it as the constant times the derivative of just the function itself. So in this case, when we're trying to take the derivative of 1 over 4 times t to the 4th. 1 over 4 is a constant. We can take that outside of the derivative and rewrite it as 1 over 4 times the derivative of t to the 4th. So now we have 1 over 4 times, now t to the 4th, remember, it's a power or it's a variable raised to a certain power, so we have to use the power rule. Once again, we're going to bring the power down and subtract the power by 1. So it's going to be 4t to the 4 minus 1, which is 3. So realize the 1 fourth and the 4 will cancel, and so we're left with t cubed. And so I can go ahead and say that our function is written f in terms of t, so the derivative will be f prime of t. And so that is going to be equal to, once again, derivative of 1 4 t to the 4th, we found to be t cubed. And then we have plus the derivative of 2, 2 which is a constant, so the derivative of a constant is 0. So what we have left is t cubed, and that's the final answer. So now for number 5, we have y equals x raised to the power of negative 2 fifths. Now we have it in the form where we're trying to take the derivative of x raised to some power n. Remember, n can be any real number or any real value. We still can use the power rule here. So once again, we're going to bring the power down and subtract the power by 1. So in this case, we can write it in several different ways, the derivative. Now because we have it in the form y equals something, we can write it as dy dx, we can write it as y prime. And in this case, I'll just write it as y prime because that's the fastest way. And then that's going to equal the derivative of x to the negative 2 fifths. Once again, we're going to bring the power down, the entire power, including that negative. So negative 2 fifths, x to the, now we're going to subtract that power by 1. So negative 2 fifths minus 1. So then we'll have negative 2 fifths times x to the negative 2 fifths minus 1. We can write it as negative 2 fifths minus 5 over 5, which is going to be negative 7 over 5. Now if you want to simplify and bring down the exponent to the denominator, you can also rewrite it as y prime equals negative 2 over 5x to the 7 fifths. And that's the final answer. So now for number 6, we have v of r equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now our function is v in terms of r, so r is the only variable in this function. Notice pi is just a constant and 4 thirds is just a constant, so both of those are constants. Now we're going to take when we take the derivative, we're going to write it as v prime of r, because we're going to take the derivative of v with respect to r. And so in order to derive this, once again, 4 thirds pi is just a constant. So we can say 4 thirds pi times the derivative of r cubed. Once again, we do have a variable raised to an exponent, so we have to use the power rule. So when we derive, we have 4 thirds pi on the outside times the derivative of r cubed. Once again, using the power rule, we bring the power down and then subtract the power by 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Notice the 3's will cancel, and so we're left with 4 pi r squared. And so that is going to be equal to v prime of r. Now for number 7, we have y of t equals 6 t to the negative ninth. Our function is y in terms of t, so t is going to be the only variable here. 6 is just a constant, so when we derive, we can say 6 times the derivative of t to the negative ninth. So now the same thing here, we use the power rule. So when we derive, we get 6 times the derivative of t to the negative 9. Once again, we bring the entire power down, subtract that power by 1. 
So we get negative 9t to the negative 9 minus 1, which is negative 10. 6 times negative 9 is negative 54. So we get negative 54t to the negative 10. You can also rewrite it as negative 54 over t to the 10. So that is going to be equal to y prime of t, or the derivative. So now for number 8, we have g of x equals a square root of x minus 2 times e to the x. So in order to take the derivative of square root of x, we can rewrite it as x to the 1 half power. So I can rewrite it as x to the 1 half minus 2 e to the x. So now we can use the power rule in order to derive it. So once again, we're going to bring the power down. So we get 1 half x. We're going to subtract the power by 1. So 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Since we do have a minus here separating both of these terms, we can go ahead and use the difference rule. So we have minus the derivative of 2 e to the x. Now remember, the derivative of e to the x is just equal to the same thing. It's still going to be e to the x. But 2 is just a constant, so we can leave that outside. So we can call it, or we can rewrite it as 2 times the derivative of e to the x. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So our answer is just 2 e to the x. So we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 2 e to the x. So that is going to be equal to g prime of x, or the derivative. Now for number 9, we have f of x equals 1 half x, the entire thing raised to the fifth power. Now in order to derive this, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the exponent inside the parentheses. So when I go ahead and take 1 half x to the fifth power, 1 half to the fifth power is going to be 1 over 32 times x to the fifth. So now when I go ahead and derive this 1 over 32, remember it's just a constant. So we can take 1 over 32 times the derivative of x to the fifth. Because we have x raised to a certain power, we have to use the power rule. So when I derive, we have 1 over 32 times the derivative of x to the fifth. Once again, when using the power rule, we bring the power down, subtract the power by 1. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So then we have 5 over 32 x to the fourth. And that's the final answer for f prime of x. Now for number 10, we have g of x equals x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now we can perfectly derive x squared, but we can't necessarily derive 1 over x squared yet. So we have to actually bring that exponent up to the numerator and rewrite it as x squared plus x to the negative second. So now we can get it in the form so that we can use the power rule. So the derivative of x squared, once again we're going to bring the power down, subtract the power by 1, so then we get 2x to the first, or just 2x then plus the derivative of x to the negative second, where once again we're going to bring the power down, so negative 2x, and we're going to subtract the power by 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So we get g of x is going to be equal to 2x. We do have a minus here, so we have minus 2 over x cubed. Or you can also write it as minus 2x to the negative third power. But that's going to be the final answer. Now for number 11, we have y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, all over the square root of x. Now we can't derive it in this current form right now. But since we do have pluses here, what we can do is separate this entire fraction into three separate fractions. So I can rewrite it as y equals x squared over the square root of x plus 4x over the square root of x plus 3 over the square root of x. So now in order to simplify this, I'm going to rewrite the denominator as x to the 1 half. So we have x squared over x to the 1 half, and then plus 4x over x to the 1 half, and then plus 3 over x to the 1 half. So x squared over x to the 1 half is just going to be x to the 3 halves, because once again, whenever we divide by the same variable, we can subtract the exponents. So 2 minus 1 half is 1 and a half, or 3 halves plus 4x over x to the 1 half, that's just going to be 4x to the 1 half, because on the numerator we have 4x to the first, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, and then plus 3 over x to the 1 half. Now in order to use the power rule, I'm going to go ahead and bring that power to the numerator and make it negative. So I'll rewrite it as 3x to the negative 1 half. So now I can go ahead and rewrite it and say that is equal to y. So y equals x to the 3 halves plus 4x to the 1 half plus 3x to the negative 1 half. And so now if I go ahead and move this a little bit, in order to derive this all I have to use is the power rule. So the derivative of x to the 3 halves, once again we're going to bring the power down, 
x to the, when we subtract the power by 1. So 3 halves minus 1, or minus 2 over 2 is going to be 1 half, plus, now 4 is just a constant, so we have 4 times the derivative of x to the 1 half. The derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then plus, we have 3x to the negative 1 half. Once again, 3 is a constant. So 3 times the derivative of x to the negative 1 half is negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus 1, which is negative 3 halves. So now we can go just go ahead and simplify. So we have 3 halves x to the 1 half plus uh, 4 times 1 half is 2, so 2x two to the negative 1 half. And then we have plus 3 times negative 1 half, which is negative 3 halves x to the negative 3 halves. So if you want to, you can also go ahead and bring those powers down to the denominator. So for the final answer, we can say that y prime, or the derivative of y, equals 3 halves x to the 1 half. We have plus 2 over x to the 1 half. And then minus 3 halves, or 3 over 2, x to the 3 halves. Now for number two, we have y equals 4 pi squared. Now both 4 and pi are constants. Remember the derivative of a constant is 0, so y prime is just simply equal to 0. So now for number 13 we have v equals t cubed minus 1 over the fourth root of t cubed. Now if I go ahead and rewrite the function we have t cubed minus 1 over, now I can go ahead and rewrite this as t to the 3 fourths power. So now in order to use that power rule we need to bring that power up to the numerator and write it as a negative power. So we have t cubed minus t to the negative 3 fourths. So now we can easily use the power rule. So when we take the derivative of t cubed, that's going to be 3t squared minus the derivative of t times negative, or t to the negative 3 fourths power. Once again, we're going to bring the power down, so negative 3 fourths, and then subtract the power by 1. So negative 3 fourths minus 1, or negative 3 fourths minus 4 over 4, is going to be negative 7 fourths. Negatives will cancel, so we have a positive. 3t squared, go ahead and rewrite that 3t squared, plus we have 3 over 4t to the negative 7 fourths. You can also bring that to the denominator and rewrite it as 3 over 4t to the 7 fourths. And since the function was given to us in terms of v, we can go ahead and write the derivative as v prime. And that's the final answer.